As for those babies, those pregnancies where the babies are no longer moving, they come back to life now. Those men who have lost their potency, you regain it now. Mm. Thank you, Father. Some years ago, uh, the baby in the womb of a woman died. And the doctor said they wanted to evacuate. And she said, Let me return from the Congress. And then you can do what you want. They told her that because the baby had been dead a while, and by now decomposing, that she herself may never return from the Congress. She said, it is my life. I will take the risk. Monday of the Congress, nothing happened. Tuesday of the Congress, nothing happened. Third day of the Congress, I felt like I feel tonight. I had to ask for a chair. As I was about to sit down, God said, the dead baby is back to life. I rejoice with you tonight. Every good thing in your life that had died shall come back to life now. Now, it is time for you to stand up and just praise God. Go ahead and praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him.
Thank you, Lord. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Oh. Daddy says, there is a woman here tonight. That as an act of faith, you are carrying something that looks like a baby but is not to show God that next time you'll be carrying your own baby. He asked me to tell you, I've seen you and your request is granted. If that fellow is in this particular auditorium, I would love to see you step forward in this particular auditorium. Thank you, Lord. No. Oh. Maybe you don't understand. What I saw is someone carrying something like a baby and dancing with it. Raise whatever you are carrying. Let me see. Yeah, I can see one there. The fellow was actually carrying something that looked like a baby wrapped in white. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Father. Hear the word of the Lord. Uh, 
Uh, I think I can see her there. Uh, that's her. That's her. Uh, I can see. Okay. Uh, there are more than one. Uh, okay. Hear the word of the Lord. By this time next year, you will stand on this altar. Glory be to God. God bless you. You can go back to your seats. You can go back to your seats. As the Lord lives, by this time next year, you will stand on this altar to testify. Thank you, Lord. The Lord asked me to tell those of you who came tonight He said I will walk miracles through you Okay. I hope you are praying for me. <laughs> I need it this evening. The power of God is mighty here tonight. Oh, my Lord. The Lord said there is someone here. He says, Your house is always very quiet. He said, Very soon, it will be very noisy. Filled with the laughter of many children. Okay, okay. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, we can, we can talk a little now. Um, next month, by the grace of God, we'll be having our youth convention. <laughs> Beginning from the 3rd of October. And the theme is Shine Forth. Shine forth. I want to remind you, please, of your uh, of your pledges concerning dormitories. We want to build dormitories. I've heard from a couple of people who said they would love to build single-handedly uh, 
a dormitory or two. If you are also led in that direction, we need many, many dormitories. If we had gone around in the night running our convention, you have seen quite a few people sleeping in the auditoriums. I know Daddy said long ago, no matter how large our buildings, they will never be large enough. But we want to try as much as possible to make dormitories available to as many as we can. So, if we can build one single-handedly, or two, or ten, or twenty, or join with your friend to build one, as God enables you, please help. And we have to move fast. We are waiting for the rain to end and then begin to build. Ah, thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy says there's someone here. He said the last failure you had will be your last. He asked me to tell somebody, he said, this time around, the enemy won't know you are pregnant until you have delivered. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Shall we? Deuteronomy 7 from verse 8. While you are opening your Bibles, we want to thank God for our new national overseer for the message he brought us this evening. That was good. Thank you. We want to say thank you to the choir. You are great again as usual. Deuteronomy chapter 7, reading from verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, and because you will keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers as the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt he is God the faithful which keepeth, keepeth covenant that love him and means to a thousand generations. Let's jump to verse 12. Wherefore it shall come to pass if he hearken to these judgments and keep and do them 
that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thy oil, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the to thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all, all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. What is a covenant? For you to understand what a covenant is, we have to take a look at certain things before that. First, promises. I can say to you that I will give you something. You can arrive and discover I have traveled. You and discover, yes, I want to give you, give you, but uh, the money I was expecting didn't come. So promises can be broken. but not by God. In Numbers 23, verse 19, Numbers 23, verse 19, the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Because many a times, so even when I'm promising, I have no intention of uh, fulfilling. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, 2 Corinthians 1 20 said the promises of God are always yea and amen. And then we can go a step deeper and discuss something called contract. Those of you who are businessmen, and women, you know that a contract is an agreement involving two sides. Side one says, if you do this, I will do this for you. Side two will say, all right, I agree. And we put it in writing. And we both sign. The contract has no value until we have appended our signature. And in the contract, there will always be a penalty if the contract is broken. But contracts can be broken. A covenant, you could call it a contract, an agreement that must be with blood. That's what a covenant is. A contract signed with blood of both parties. And the penalty for breaking a covenant is usually death. A 
first time God made a covenant with man, he insisted that the man must shed blood. Genesis 17, verse 10. Genesis 17, verse 10. And he said, My covenant with you, which you must keep between me and you, and your seed after you, every man child must be circumcised. When God entered into that covenant with Abraham, he was close to a hundred years old. You can imagine how painful it is for a 99-year-old man to circumcise. But he did. And God said clearly in Genesis 17, verse 14, Genesis 17, verse 14, Anyone that breaks my covenant shall be cut off. Penalty for breaking a covenant is usually death. A word that is close to covenant is a word called vow. When you make a vow. You can read about that in Numbers chapter 30 from verse 2 to 16. Number 30 from verse 2 to 16. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 4 to 5, Ecclesiastes 5, 4 to 5, that when you make a to pay, because to make a vow to God, to delay, not even refuse now, to delay to pay it, God says, that makes you a fool. And we know a fool is the one who says, there is no God. Now, because of time, there are many covenants between God and man. You see, the only one who could break a covenant and go scot free is God. Why? Because he can't die. And yet, he doesn't break covenants. He's a covenant keeping God. For as long as the Lord will allow me to teach tonight, and that may not be long, because practically He wants to do everything by Himself tonight. He assured me, my father assured me, that there's going to be a spiritual earthquake here tonight. Yeah. It will be spiritual. You may not feel it. You may or you may not. But very quickly, at least why I can see articulate words, there is a covenant of healing. Exodus 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, 
verse 26 he said if you would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and we give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes he's spelling out the terms he said what you are to do hacking diligently to the voice of the Lord your God do what is right in his sight give ear to his commandments keep all his statutes he said then on my own side I will see to it that you are never sick. I will be your personal doctor. That's the covenant of healing and health. So that will help you to understand Psalm 107. From verse 17 to 20. So 107 from verse 17 to 20. Of their transgression. Because of their iniquity, because they refuse to do what God asked them to do. They become afflicted. Whether you want to believe it or not, the root cause of majority, let's put it that way, to be on the safe side, of sickness and disease is sin. Oh, the devil can bring sickness. Sin opens the door to the enemy to attack. The word of God is clear. If a man's ways please God, huh, he will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. I'm not claiming to be the closest man to God on earth. <laughs> How can I ever say that? But, if I'm walking, going on my prayer walk at night, and I accidentally strike my leg against a stone, even though I'm walking in the dark, I will stop and check. Daddy, what have I done wrong? Because one of his covenants is he will command his angels to carry you in their hands that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And he is <laughs> a covenant keeping God. So anytime anything goes wrong, check. The first fellow to check is me. What's wrong with me, Lord? What am I doing wrong? I want to 17 to 20 that we were discussing. I said, fools because of their transgression and their iniquities became afflicted. But if you read it down, further down, when they find that they, they could not even eat anymore, 
they were so sick, they cried unto the Lord. Oh Lord, sorry sir, we missed it. We won't do so again. And then God said, okay. Then he sent his word and healed them. That covenant is here tonight. Strongly operative. <laughs> As the one who sent me lives. <laughs> Shall I say before whom I sit? There will be many healings here tonight. There is the covenant of deliverance. And the victory. I'm combining the two because of time. Deuteronomy chapter 28. From verse 1 to 7. Deuteronomy 28. From verse 1 to 7. It reads almost like Exodus 15, 26. If you were acting diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all that he commands you. Ah. After he has spoken about all manners of blessings, he went on to say, in verse 7, the enemies that rise up against you will be smitten before your face. That is what God said. So when your enemy begins to ride the rough shot over you, then something is wrong between you and God. It's a covenant keeping God. In Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, Joshua 1, from verse 1 to 8. <laughs> Thank you, Father. The Lord said, There's someone here tonight who's already wondering where did I go wrong? He said, I will remind you. In Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, God told Joshua, referring to this covenant in Deuteronomy 20, he said, nobody will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That's what he said to him. But then came Joshua chapter 7. You can read it from verse 1 to 12. And the children of Israel went against a very small city. And they fled before them. Ah. Joshua said, ah. God, this is not our covenant. What you said is nobody will be able to stand before me. Now, I am the one running. from the enemy. He said, there is sin in your camp. And until you remove that sin in your camp, I'm not going with you anymore. Contract broken by you. I pray for someone tonight. From this moment onward, when your enemy see you coming, 
they will run. Why? Because you will return to your God fully. There is the covenant of blessing. Oh, I'm talking about covenant of victory. You know it is written, Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, 37. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. To be more than a conqueror is that you don't even have to fight. God will fight for you. But don't forget, he said, I love those who love me. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. Proverbs 8, verse 17. Don't forget that he said clearly, you are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, you must keep the other side of the covenant. The covenant of blessings is also there in Deuteronomy chapter 28. If you have taken note of the conditions in verse 1 and 2, in fact, in verse 2 it says, the blessings will be so much, you'll be running. you say, this is too much. Not even started. And whether you believe it or not, I have the backing of the Lord. When I decree to somebody here tonight, long before you die, the world will know there's a rich one in Africa. Thank you, Daddy. I think I had something similar to this when my, my son was preaching and was referring to Hannah. But the Lord asked me to tell someone here tonight, plain and simple. He said, you are begging me for a child. By the time I finish with you, they are... <laughs> the Bible said, you keep his covenant, obey him in all things, he said, you will prosper so much, you'll be lending to nations. That's what God said. Keep his covenant. Your prosperity has nothing to do with the nation where you are living. A nation can be near bankruptcy. And you will have enough money to lend to nations. That's what God said. That's what God said. There is the covenant of mercy. Covenant of Mercy. Ah, thank you, Lord. How can we ever forget? Daddy asked me to tell someone. You will never forget that this is the man that the tide turned for you. (laughs) 
How can we forget? How can we forget this Holy Ghost service? How can we? There's a covenant of mercy where the Almighty God said, Romans chapter 9, verse 15 to 16, 9, 15 to 16, He said, uh, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He's talking about me now. Who is he talking about? <laughs> the way you said me shows that you are not sure. <laughs> he said, therefore, it's not of him that will it, nor of him that runneth, but of God who shows mercy. There is a covenant of mercy. If God has not been merciful unto us, we won't be alive today. How many of you know that I'm speaking the truth? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Hmm. But in that covenant of mercy, It shows us how you can penetrate into that covenant. In Matthew chapter 10, sorry, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, Matthew 5, verse 7, it said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Ah. He said, I am the sovereign God. I do whatever I like. I show mercy to whom I will show mercy, compassion to whom I will show compassion. But he said, if you are merciful, then you are ready. He said, you can also Come into that covenant with me. According to Proverbs 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. If you confess your sin and forsake them, then you will have mercy. So if you cover your sin, forget prosperity. But if you confess your sin and forsake Take them, he said, you obtain mercy. It's a covenant of mercy. The covenant of mercy enables you to get what you don't deserve. It causes God to do incredible things, things he would not normally have done. Mark chapter 1 from verse 40 to 45. Mark 1, 40 to 45. A leper came to him and said, I know you have the power to make me clean. I'm not sure you are, you are willing. The Bible says, moved by compassion, he touched the leper. God who said, don't touch any leper, if you accidentally touch a leper, you yourself must remain unclean for a period of time. Broke the rule and touched the leper. And of course, he was cleansed. I decree, based on the covenant of mercy, that God will touch somebody here tonight.
That's why according to the passage that the, my son used as his text or referred to, all that Bartimaeus was asking for was mercy. Just, just give me mercy, 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 O oh Lord. And all that he got, you can't believe it. He got his sight back. He never begged again. All his enemies became his servants, and so on and so forth. By the mercy of the Most High God, everything you need to keep succeeding for the rest of your life, receive it tonight. Then there is the covenant of newness. Covenant of newness. In Revelation 21, verse 5, Revelation 21, verse 5. Oh, I rejoice with somebody. Daddy says, you are jobless now. He said, very soon, you will have a problem deciding which offer to accept. Amen. Oh, the prophecies are coming right, left, and center. I'm, I'm just trying to see which one to tell you. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, and I believe that includes me. He said, every damage that coronavirus has done to your life and ministry, I will reverse. In Revelation 21 verse 5, Revelation 21 verse 5, God said, Behold, I make all things new. All things new. Not too long ago, we were studying in the open heavens something about New Jerusalem. Revelation 21, verse 2. Revelation 21, verse 2. And I was telling my children, everything about the original Jerusalem is beautiful. The city of peace. The city of the great king. Those who bless Jerusalem will have peace. And so everything about Jerusalem, the present Jerusalem, is wonderful. But God says, as wonderful as that is, I am going to make a new Jerusalem. God, has, God says, I have the ability to better my best. I decree to somebody here tonight, no matter how well it is with you now, you are just beginning. <laughs> the 
the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it has not even entered into the heart of man. You can't even imagine it. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. Oh, you think all is well now? Wait and see what is coming. <laughs> Write that one down. Wait and see what is coming. Your future is going to be glorious. Let he put it in there. A condition to enter into that covenant. I was in the prayer room when mommy was praying. And she kept on hammering something new, something new, something new in the prayer. In case you think that I saw a prayer note before I came. No. Never saw it. And I was just smiling and saying, Amen. Something new is coming your way. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. Something new is coming your way. No matter how great you are spiritually, the <laughs> Bible said in First John chapter three verse two, First John chapter three verse two, he said it doesn't even yet appear what we are going to be like. He said, but one thing we know: <laughs> when it shall appear, we shall be like him. I'm not sure you pay attention to some of the songs that uh, uh, the choir rendered. And one of the songs they say, he doesn't need a key to enter a room. They do notice that. And they say you are going to be like him. You know what that means? You won't need a car to travel. You won't need an aeroplane to travel. You will just say, I want to go to London. You will be in London. A time is coming when you won't need visa. You wait and see. They'll be waiting for you at the border. And you are already in. You do what you want to do and say, I want to be back in Nigeria. Second Corinthians 5.17 full meaning. <laughs> Creature, all, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Everything that has been causing you sorrow, you will forget. there is the covenant of answered prayers. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, call on me. I will answer you. 
Covenant keeping God is the one who said so. And we show you great and mighty things that we, that we don't even know. That's what he said. And then he added, Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 7, Isaiah 55, 6 to 7, he said, call me oh, while I'm near. Which is why it is so wonderful to be in the house of God. Because uh, when everywhere you look in the house of God, God is there. It's his house. Oh, God is everywhere, I know. <laughs> God is in my sitting room now while I'm watching you on Dove Media drinking tea. Yes, sir. Yes, ma. <laughs> but if I know him, don't forsake the assembling together of the is here right now. This is headquarters right now. I to him now and say, Lord, help me. The answer comes immediately. Sit down at home. Enjoy yourself. Just pray that you don't need God in a hurry. When you need him in a hurry, <laughs> you will know where to find him. He said, if you call on me, I will answer you. But he puts the condition for that covenant. John 15 verse 16. John 15 verse 16. He said, you've not chosen me. I'm the one who chose you that you will go and bring forth fruit and see to it that your fruit will remain. He said, then anything you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Be a soul winner. Addicted soul winner. Follow them up. Establish them. Ask anything, anything. And when God says anything, it means anything. I'm sure you had the testimony of a man who just set aside a day, a month, I mean a day, a week, when he will go on evangelism. And he went out, I think it was a Saturday, he went out from morning till he was tired. He came back. If I, if I understand very well, he had suffered a bullet wound. I think he was a soldier. Suffered a bullet wound that broke the bones of his leg. And they had fixed a piece of iron inside the bone, inside the leg. Covered everything up with flesh. But the thing had always been painful, painful, painful. So he returned from evangelism. 
And because he had been walking along, the pain was much. He said, oh God, eh? I wish this pain would go so that I can serve you better. And then he fell asleep. When he woke up, the iron inside his bone was lying on the bed beside him. No drop of blood on the bed. Because when God performs an operation, he does not share blood. blood. And we are in for that piece of iron to, to be shown to you. When God performed an operation on Adam, Adam didn't know until he woke up. I decree tonight, every plan that God has not planted in you before you wake up tomorrow, they will be gone. Thank you, Father. This one is my own. <laughs> Daddy says there's someone. He said, Your miracles will be running towards you. Thank you for giving me opportunity to preach. I didn't know I would be able. Finally, there is the covenant fruitfulness. In Exodus 23, Six. Exodus 23 from verse 25 to 26 he says you will serve the Lord your God if you do so he will bless your bread he will bless your waters he will take sickness away from you And then he said, There shall nothing cast their young. There would never be a miscarriage. He said, There will be nothing barren in your land. And you know what? He said, You will live long. That's the covenant. He said, and it's a very simple your own part of it, you will serve the Lord. How many of you will, be, will serve the Lord for the rest of your life? S say it so that you can hear, I will serve the Lord. He <laughs> said, that's the, only con that's the only condition for you. Just have him as your own part of the covenant, your part of the contract, serve the Lord. Then he said, He will bless your bread, He will bless your water, He will take sickness away from you. There'll be no not a casting this young, no miscarriage, no abortion, no steel bath. Not only will you have the children, because he said none will be barren, he said you will even live long to enjoy the children. In the text that we read at the beginning, Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 12, oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, my God. 
I rejoice with those of you who are members of Redeemed Christian Church of God. To tell you, he said, because you are mine, not only in name, but in spirit and in truth, it's a beginning from tonight. Joy will become infectious. Thank you, Daddy. We won't forget tonight. If you all, all the glory. Can you believe it? But God said, He said very soon. Those who want to help you will be competing with one another. Oh, Lord, did I say amen to that again? You know, yesterday I was because I understand what that means. I understand. Many of you may not. Yesterday I was having a meeting with my very senior pastors. And I was telling them of a particular time in my ministry. Years ago. And there was this particular branch of the church that addicted itself to looking after me. They just decided they would look after me. I'm talking of some more than 30 years ago when things were still a bit hard. And in those days, there were only two classes in, in an aeroplane. Economy and, uh, and so <laughs> we know our class, economy. And in economy, <laughs> I don't know whether things have changed. In economy, the food is not always much, not for hungry people like, like me. Years ago, I could see it. So when we finish the little food they give us, we we show it up with plenty of coke. We just keep on asking for more coke to feed the emptiness. And then suddenly there was this branch of the church that started, and they just made up their mind they would they would just look after me. They addicted themselves to it. And you know what? Very, I soon was traveling for class.
okay, Daddy, good. Uh, which airline would you like to go by so we can get the ticket? I said, ah, someone has bought the ticket. Huh? What about the hotel? Somebody had already paid for the hotel. He said it's to us. What is our offense that to allow somebody else <laughs> to, take, to take care of you? That's a prophecy you just got. Very soon. Help us will be competing. Uh, go ahead, shout hallelujah to the almighty God. I say covenant of fruitfulness. All God has you to do is serve him. And he will see to it that we are never barren. Now let me close. Because tonight, like I told those who of you who were here last night, God has commanded that we anoint all those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Barrenness is a yoke. When you go through the scriptures, if we take all those considered barren one by one, every one of them became fruitful, except one. And you are not one of that fellow. You are not in that class. But almost without exception, you will find that whenever God loves someone specially or wants to do something great through a family, the devil jumps in to block the way. The moment the devil hears God say, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make your name great. You're going to be a blessing. Through you shall all the nation of the earth be blessed. Satan said, really? We shall see. And the womb of Sarah became blocked. <sighs> Somehow Satan discovered that a child is to be born who will become a kingmaker. And he blocked the womb of Anna. Somehow the devil knew that the children of Israel are in bondage. He knew that if they repent and they cry to God, he has his uh, covenant of deliverance. I don't know how he discovered, but he blocked the womb of the wife of Manoah, the wife of Samson, and so on and so forth. But there is an anointing that destroys yokes. In the case of uh, Sarah, it was God himself who brought the anointing down. In the case of Rebecca, it was God himself in answer to the prayer of Isaac. In the case of Rachel, it was God himself. In the case of Manoah's wife, God sent an angel. In the case of uh, Elizabeth, who was going to give birth to 
the forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ, God sent an angel. But there are cases where God sent a man. In the case of Anna, God sent Eli. He made a decree. And God honored the decree. In the case of the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse in 2 Kings 4, 8 to 17, Elisha made a decree and the anointing destroyed the yoke. I don't claim to be in the same class with all these great, great prophets. I'm just an ordinary pastor. But tonight, it has pleased the Lord to put me in the office of a prophet. And even if it's only for this night, I decree your barrenness is over. things are going to become new. I'm going to just plead with those of you who are not in Christ. I'm going to plead with those of you who have not truly surrendered your life to him. I'm going to plead with those of you who are still disobeying God, calling yourself a Christian by disobeying Him. Come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight. You never can tell if a night like this will ever come again. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, truly, truly, you want to say bye-bye to a life of sin, I'm going to count from 1 to 12. Before I say 12, make sure you are standing before the altar so we can pray for your salvation. And then we'll proceed from there. I'm counting now. 1. Two. Three. Thank you, Lord. You are still going to spend some few minutes of prayer for yourself. Because what you need might not be exactly what your neighbor needs. Some of us we want the covenant for healing to be activated. Some are looking to God for the activation of the covenant for victory. Some of us, we need to cry to God for the activation of the covenant for mercy and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to dictate to you your prayer points tonight. It's just that you go to God and tell him which particular covenant you want him to activate for you or maybe one or two or more covenants. So the altar will still be open. But before you rush to the altar, let me tell you one thing. The amount of anointing around the altar tonight 
<laughs> it's high. So if you have any link with any force of darkness and you come near the altar tonight, the fire will do quite a bit of damage to such links. So you come to the altar and just cry to God. I need the activation of your covenant of healing or your covenant of health or your covenant for mercy or your covenant for fruitfulness or your covenant for newness. Let's go ahead. We have roughly 20 minutes to cry to God and say, God, activate this particular covenant in my life. The tonight is not a night when you pray quietly. <laughs> Hey. Cry unto him. He, did, he didn't say mama unto me. He said call. Call unto me. Call. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God will grant your request. On your behalf, today God will show himself mighty. The covenant keeping God will show up for you tonight. And before the sun rises, you will testify. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.